So having discussed the fourth step of the Kenya's directed algorithm, now we can direct the final step that is the edge linking or edge tracking step. So uh, recall that we divided the edges into three different sets. S, H, the set of all pixel coordinates with strong edge points. Then we have S, W, set of all weak edge points. And finally, we have S, R, all the rejected edge points. So these are the points that we do not care about. These are rejected directly from being an edge point in the resultant image. So we have an image So all the points belonging to SH, we set the value to 255. We'll just use the same color to denote them so that it's easier to understand. So we set all the points in the set SH to value 255. All the points in the set SW, we set their value to perhaps 128. And all the points in the set SR, these are rejected and we set their value to 0. So these are rejected edge points. Now in the final step, the task is to divide this set SW into two parts. One is set SWH and another is set SWR where set SWH is a set of all points that are transferred from set SW to set SH and the set SWR denotes a set of all points that are transferred from set SW to set SR means these are the points that will be finally rejected from the set SW and these are the points that will be finally accepted as H point from set SW and the fifth step is a way of dividing the set into two parts. So the way Kenya ejection algorithm does is this. So we process each of the pixel in an image one by one and then all the strong edge points are going to preserve. So for example first we'll scan this point and we will find uh, if, if this is a strong point We'll just move to the next point so we'll just set its value 255 and then we'll move to next point and so on until we arrive over here and so on we have all the white points then we arrive at this point and when we arrive at this point we we look for its connectivity so if any pixel coordinate p in set sw if it is connected to any Call any any pixel in set SH then this point is preserved and its value and this this point is right away transferred to set SH so we used eight connected neighborhood so we scan each of the pixels and we consider its eight neighborhood pixels let's suppose if this is a strong if this if this point belongs to SH that is values 255 then we do nothing we just set uh, it's uh, we just move to the next pixel because this pixel is already high value and now let's assume that this pixel is in the set SW meaning its value is 128 then we look for its neighbor so if any of these neighbors is in set SH or if any of these neighbors has value 255 then we move this pixel to set s w h meaning this pixel is set to 255 if none of the neighbors are connected uh, if none of the neighbors of this pixel are 255 
or in the set sh then we just delete this pixel basically deletion means we divide it we, we just move it to set swr and we just set its value to zero so if none of the pixels is in the set sh then we just delete it and its value is set to zero so this is what the final edge linking or edge tracking step is so we scan pixel we scan the image pixel by pixel if the pixel is in the strong uh, set uh, mean it is the set sh then we just leave the point as it is because it has already been marked as the edge point in the in the final image if the pixel is in the set sw meaning uh, it's, uh, the, the grain magnitude is between lower threshold and the higher threshold then we scan the neighbors of the pixel and if any of the neighbors if any of these neighbors are strong edge points or in the set sh then we just mark this current point also as a strong edge point and we do this in place replacement for example uh, let's assume that we are, we have this image we have this original image then rather than making a duplicate copy of that image and in that image setting the value of this pixel to 255 we directly in the original image as well which we are using for the step number five we directly modify this pixel value to 255 if any of its neighbor is in the uh, is in the set sh and we delete this point in the original image as well if none of its neighbor are in the set sh and why do we do this because for example let's consider a case let's consider 1d case or uh, let's suppose we have two points in the set sh and all the other points are in the set s w now let's suppose we we have the final image we scan this point its value is 255 so we just leave it as 255 now we come to this pixel we see that its neighbor is 255 so we set its value also 255 next we scan this pixel and now we will see that none of these points are in the set sh these both these both neighbors are in the set sw and that's why we will delete this point similarly we will delete this point as well similarly we will delete this point as well and similarly this point will survive because of this neighbor and likewise this point will survive so this is an undesirable uh, effect basically because it, it looks like that this is a continuous edge in one direction so rather than modifying the value in only the final resultant image we modify we do in place replacement so for example we directly modify this image which is uh, what the in place replacement is so we scan this value is high so we leave it as it is 255 next we come to this pixel and we see its neighbor is 255 so we set it to high value now when we come to this pixel although this was originally in set sw but since it is connected to a strong neighbor we have set it uh, we have also moved it to set sh and now due to this neighbor this pixel will also be set to high this will also be set to high high uh, this is also the higher in the set sh and find this one as well so this you can see is, is going to give us the desired result that we wanted whereas if we don't do in place replacement then the uh, edge tracking or uh, edge uh, linking process will fail so we use in place uh, um, replacement meaning typically for example in rest of the image processing uh, task for example when we are doing image smoothing we don't do in place replacement for example if we are smoothing an image and let's suppose we consider the three cross three neighborhood so once so we modify the so in earlier uh, image smoothing steps basically we looked at the neighbor we completed the lessons we are doing average smoothing we looked at the neighbor we are we do we, we compute the average value 
and we modify the pixel value but we don't do it in the original image that we are smoothing we make another copy of this image and there we replace the pixel value with the new value that we have computed if we had done the in place replacement then for some of the pixels we will do filtering multiple times and their value would, would change uh, drastically as opposed to you know what uh, as, 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 as compared to the result that we ideal should have obtained as a result of a smoothing so in the rest of the algorithms that we had discussed earlier we don't do in place replacement but in this fifth step edge link edge tracking we do in place replacement furthermore uh, regarding the neighborhood of the pixel so when we check for the neighborhood of a pixel we look at all the eight neighbors in all the directions sometimes in the literature the four neighbors are used for example the neighbor uh, at the uh, at the top and the bottom and to the left and right and typically some of the literature uh, ignore the corner the the uh, the diagonal neighbors but uh, typically when we use canny as director algorithm we take the uh, we take the diagonal neighbors also into account when we check for the strong neighbor or the neighbors that are in the set sh so we use eight connected neighbor rather than using the four connected neighborhood so we don't use this we use the eight connected neighborhood for the edge linking and the edge tracking process so the idea behind this canny edge direction algorithm behind this double thresholding and edge linking and edge tracking step is that uh, typically uh, we assume that the strong edges will always only be due to the true edges in the original image so basically when we uh, divided the uh, edge points in a strong weak and rejected category we assume basically that the strong edge points are going to be uh, uh, due to the true edges present in the image uh, and the weak edge points can be either due to the true edge point true true edge or they can be because of the texture or some noise in an image or maybe due to the blurred edge in an image and uh, typically it's a, it, we, we, we basically assume that the latter type will thus probably distribute it independently uh, of the true edges on the entire image and only small amount of these will be located adjacent to true or strong edges uh, furthermore weak edges uh, due to true edges will more likely be connected to the uh, strong edges that is the the, the the strong edge points in the set H, uh, sh and thus we preserve them based on the connectivity to the strong edges so basically uh, we, we have a kind of assuming that the weak edge points can be result of the texture or the noise in an image and they would be identical so sort of uniformly distributed uh, over over the entire image and only tiny fraction of those would be uh, sort of connected to the strong edge points would be due to the strong would be due to the true edge or uh, true edges in the image and if that is the case we will find them via the tracking process via the linking process by checking their connectivity so if they are connected to strong edge points then there, there's a high chance that these are actually the true edge points in the image that these weak edge points are a result of the true edges that are present in the image so that so that is the idea that is uh, sort of you know exploited in the canny edge direction algorithm so this ends our discussion of the canny edge direction algorithm now we will show the output of canny edge direction in some of the sample images and that will uh, completely end our discussion on the topic of edge detection